Hey sweeties, talking about the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Air Fryer Oven. 10 functions in one unit. Let's talk about what are the 10 functions. We'll go over the dimensions. We'll look at the accessories. What makes it smart? Spoiler alert, it's this thermometer. We'll get into all of this, but first please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. And now let's get into this Ninja Foodie 10 in one smart air fryer oven. The full name for this unit is the Ninja Foodie Smart 10 in one XL Pro. Let me make sure I got that right. Hang on, the Ninja Foodie 10 in one Smart XL Pro air fry oven. Yes, that is a mouth full. So what are the 10 functions? Let's read them out. And I am on the uh, Ninja Kitchen website so I can get the information correct. So air fry, air roast, bake, whole roast, broil, toast, bagel, dehydrate, reheat, and pizza in this 1800 watt oven. What are the differences between all of those functions? Well, they give you a handy chart that lets you know when you have it on toast, the air fryer fan, the fan is not on so it doesn't blow your toast around. Same thing with bagel. The fan is not on during the bagel function either. That was very important because I had that issue when I used the, um, what is it, the Instant Pot Vortex oven you can't turn the fan off and it just blew the toast all over. My toast and cheese, the cheese is on the side of the, th whatever. This, <laughs> you can have a couple of settings where the fan is not on. It's got top and bottom heating elements. And in some of the functions, the top is a higher heat element. The bottom is a higher heat element. So it varies, but it gives you a chart that goes through all of that. Um, so it does have three heating elements, top, bottom, and rear, and it has the fan in the rear for that convection, that air circulation. Let's talk about the dimensions of this uh, Ninja Foodi Smart 10-in-1 uh, XL Pro air fryer oven. This is a, it's a big um, <laughs> unit. The measurement from the handle to the rear, the bump out on the rear, of this unit is just over 20 inches. The owner's manual recommends you leave an inch of clearance for circulation all the way around. The unit measures 13 inches, just over 13 inches from bottom to top. And then across the top, it's about 17 inches. It comes to right about 18 with this thermometer on the side. The unit comes with the two racks inside two wire racks and it's supposed to fit two inch pizzas and the racks are about 14 and a half inches wide by 11 and a quarter inches deep. This also comes with the air fry basket and that just slides in. I'm gonna take this one out. Slides in just like so. It is about 14 and a quarter inches wide and just 11 inches deep. The unit also comes with two sheet pans. and this roasting tray. So you use the roasting tray inside one of the sheet pans and then slide that onto the rack. And they recommend using this roasting pan sheet tray combination when you're cooking like a, a fatty meat, like a roast, uh, say a prime rib or a whole chicken, it helps to cut down on any smoking. And I'm gonna show you, I roasted a whole chicken in here using this, so I'll show you exactly how it worked, and it worked well. So um, those are the accessories, and I also 
since I got the smart oven, it has the thermometer that clips onto the side and plugs in. Let's show you. You just unwind it. Plug it in under here where it says insert. And then put the probe inside your food and you can close the door on the cord. That's not an issue. And it'll let you know when your food has reached its desired temperature. Now one warning, I have it here on the island and the power source is below. Do not plug it in where the power source is below. That's a warning they have in the manual. It should be plugged into a wall outlet. So I don't use it here on this island. This is just for demonstration purposes. It was the best place to show it. I usually use it back um, on the counter back there and plugged into the wall. And then it comes with this three foot long cord. Now, we love toast in this house. My husband is a huge fan of toast and we wanted a air fryer oven that could replace a toaster. So if it doesn't make toast, doesn't make toast well, then we don't need it. So I tried the toaster function out. It has seven toaster uh, toast settings from one, one being the lightest and seven being the darkest. And you can fit up to, you know, depending on the size of your bread, about six regular size slices of bread on the rack. So I tried at uh, level four and also at level six. And it toasts evenly front to back and side to side. Both sides, you don't have to worry about flipping the toast over because it has heating elements on the top and the bottom as well. So you don't have to flip and turn the toast during cooking. Um, that's a very important thing. If you're looking for a um, air fryer oven that can replace a toaster and toaster oven, you really need something that has heating elements on the top and the bottom. Because who wants to be flipping and turning toast? No, that's a no. So does it make good toast? Well, yeah, it did a fine job evenly toasting on um, both of the settings that I used it on, on four and on six. Um, six is a little dark for me, um, but I mean, I don't know. How do you like your toast? Do you like it really, really dark? Do you like it a little, a little bit light? I'm kind of, I think four is like my toast level preference. I think my husband is a level five toast, a little darker than I like mine, but it worked perfectly. We'll of course do a six month follow up to see, is it still, you know, making toast after six months? Because if you've seen my review of the Power XL air fryer oven, it stopped working properly um, before six months, it was about four or five months. It wasn't making toast any longer. It wasn't reaching the proper temperature, um, which I double checked, um, with my Weber connect thermometer. So this toaster oven, the Ninja foodie, uh, XL smart 10 in one pro air fryer oven, um, says it reaches 450 degrees. I put it to the test using my Weber Connect um, thermometer, which I usually use for grilling. You can use it on any grill, you can use it on any oven. And that helped me to figure out like, is it really getting to 450 degrees? I cranked it up and let it run with the temperature probe in there. And yeah, it said it's getting to 450 degrees. And again, we will double check that after six months just to make sure that it is reaching uh still reaching 450 degrees so stay tuned for that follow-up now i did roast a whole chicken using this smart thermometer um you know i seasoned it with my seasoned salt blend and let it sit overnight you gotta season inside outside upside down under the skin make sure it's well seasoned. I let it sit in the fridge overnight so that salt can draw those flavors in. And then put the temperature probe in, let my oven preheat on the whole roast setting. So the temperature probe 
um, will allow you to cook your um, item to the, the, the proper uh, temperature. So for chicken, it doesn't give you a choice. It says uh, 165 degrees is the um, temperature that you're shooting for. Well done. If you're doing something like uh, steak, um, you can choose the temperature. Like for steak, you can say, do I want it medium, uh, rare, well done, and you can choose that temperature setting but not for chicken. For chicken, it says 165 degrees as recommended by the USDA. So you put the probe, temperature probe in to the thickest part of the chicken breast and place placed on that um, roasting tray on top of the sheet pan and then slide it into the oven. And the oven just keeps track of the temperature. You'll see all of the, um, the temperature that the of the chicken is as it rises during cooking is displayed here on the handle and when the chicken is within about 20 degrees of its um, the temperature that you're aiming for then the recipe in the book that was following the recipe in the book um, recommends that if you're going to be using the Excuse me. If you're going to be using the air fryer basket with your vegetables, um, green beans, asparagus, that kind of thing, you can put them into the basket and slide it in when the temperature of the chicken is about 20 degrees um, from finishing. So that way your vegetable and your chicken are done all in one unit all at the same time. That's the theory. Did it work out like that? Oh, my green beans needed a little bit longer, but that was fine because I let my chicken rest for a few minutes. And while the chicken was resting, I let the, um, put the green beans in for another uh, eight minutes or so. The chicken came out really nice and juicy. I was very happy with it. I might've pulled it out at 160 degrees and let the carryover cooking bring it up to 165. Um, I mean, it was moist. Could it have been, I think a little bit less done? Yeah, but it was cooked all the way through in the breast, in the thigh, the, you know, that's the tricky part is to um, get the breast and the thigh done at the same time. But this did a fine job. I was very, very happy with it. But did that skin get crispy? <laughs> oh, yes, it did. Listen to this crunch. So I was very happy with the way this chicken and green beans came out. Um, the onions weren't part of the recipe. I added that, but I was very happy with it. And now it's time to clean up. So we let everything cool down first so we don't burn ourselves. Sink of warm soapy water. I use my little scrubby brush and I mean, it all came clean very easily. The wire basket clean, just a little bit of scrubbing and the um, baking rack has a nonstick coating. So we just let it, you know, soften just for a minute or two, not very long in that hot soapy water and it, the uh, the chicken leavings come off very easily. Now I used um, some aluminum foil on the sheet pan underneath this rack. So I didn't really have to clean that at all. So that is a tip that they say in the owner's manual that you can use um, aluminum foil on the sheet pan on that um, baking tray, but not on this roasting rack. Don't put foil on this roasting rack when you're using it because that can interfere with the um, smoke reduction properties. But it cleans up very, very easily. Um, the nonstick surface works well. Just a little bit of a, you know, scrub with this brush. It would probably come off with a, a washcloth, a dishcloth as well. But um, yeah, I'm very happy with the way this worked out. This was just real time cleaning, y'all. <laughs> this is how it worked. And um, then if you look inside the oven itself, you got a little uh, juices splattered on the door. I just took a, a dishcloth with a little warm soapy water on it and wiped down the door, wiped down the um, inside all around the back just to get any um, 
you know, cooking juices and greases off of the unit because you don't want to cook on, like you don't want to leave that and then cook with it another time and burn those, that grease on because then it becomes very difficult to get off. So you want to clean it as you go. So you let it cool and then you just wash it down with a damp cloth. This is that um, crumb tray, that drip tray that slides out uh, and you can wash that. And yeah, look, it comes up easily because it hasn't um, cooked on. We just dry it off and uh, that's it. We're done cleaning. So, so far, this Ninja Foodie uh, 10 in one smart air fryer oven is doing a great job. We'll follow up in six months, but there is one sort of issue that I found. So this is supposed to be model number DT251. That is what I ordered. And that's supposed to be the 10 in one smart Ninja Foodi XL Pro Grow. But when I turned it around in the back and looked, the little plaque there on the back says it is, DT, the unit is two, unit number is T, DT200. What was that? That's not what I ordered. So I look up, what is unit DT200? And that's the eight in one air fryer oven. So I was wondering, did they pull a little switcheroo on me? I don't know. Let me call up the 800 number at Ninja Kitchens and find out. So I called and I got a human being <laughs> over in customer service, which is always nice. I didn't have to wait very long. And um, I let them know what my question was. You know, why does, when I order it, it says DT251 and on the unit it says DT200. And the uh, customer service agent said, hey, plug it in and let's see if you get those 10 functions. And that's what I did. I plugged it into the wall back there and I went through each of the functions, air fry, air roast, toast, bake, dehydrate, pizza, bagel, I'm, de uh, I forgot something. But I went through all 10 functions and all 10 were there. And she said, yes, you have the DT251. There was a mislabeling issue in August where some of the DT251 Smart 10 and one XL Pro units were mislabeled as the DT200. Um, so just beware of that if you purchase it. It might not say the same, um, the, the model number might be different. So always double check. It's great to, idea to call customer service and just see, you know, what's going on because you wanna get what you paid for. You know, if you paid for the DT251, you don't want the DT200. <laughs> so all in all, it works great. We'll do a six month uh, follow up to see is it still getting to 200, uh, is it still getting up to 450 degrees? Is it still making toast? Is it toasting evenly? Is it, um, you know, doing what it's supposed to do? So make sure you come on back for that. Please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and y'all have a delicious day.